Hey guys, today I want to I I want to talk about the pressure of influence. Hold on, let me get um the really fixed to the camera. I hope you guys are doing well today, YouTube and. Everyone, it is really a joy for me to be with you today. Um, it is, it is so amazing how I started. Like, um, uh, about eleven years ago, this May, I started putting stuff on YouTube. Um, start putting started putting my sermons and stuff on YouTube and look at me 11 years later I get I get things from England and the US and um, it is really a joy and it continues to be a joy um, but with that joy um, comes pressure. And for me today, I I wanted to talk a bit about um, the pressure of influence. Many people today uh, want influence, they want to um, get their business out there, they want to get their YouTube channel started, they want to start a church, they want to have children, and they don't understand the pressure or the cost of influence. That's what I want to talk about today, uh, the pressure of influence. Um, influence is a double-edged sword in that you you get the people or the fame um, but the more people and fame you get is the more responsibility you have to uh, deal with and sometimes it is so I'm beginning to understand sometimes it is so it is a lot of pressure and a lot of uh, pain that comes along with influence, and and on the other hand, it is the greatest joy ever. And what I'm learning is, for me, I I I have to first of all listen to the voice of God uh, when when he not only tells me to do something or tells me to preach something, um, I have to listen to the voice of God when he is telling me not to do something. And sometimes saying no is the hardest thing ever. And sometimes something could be a good thing, but not a God thing. And sometimes it's hard to know the difference. Um, I've gotten many requests to do things and to do ministry things or to help people with ministry things that, or or for <laughs> or for even dating or, or for this and that. And the hardest thing to say is no. And what I've learned is sometimes it is it is better to say no because your no could propel that person into a greater yes. We all like to say yes. We'll, we'll do that, or yes, I can do that, or yes, I can 
do this ministry opportunity or yes I can I can do this but sometimes even if it's a if, if it's a great thing it is not a God thing and in this time the church needs to be really aware of not all great things are God things. Not all help is help. It could be a hindrance. Um, there's been many times where people have told me um, to um, start um, to jo join them in ministry or to start a podcast or to do something like that and the Lord has said it's a great opportunity this person is doing great things and whatever but it's not the opportunity for you or you can't help this person because I'm sending someone else for for them or to to help them along and you're not designed to do that it, and sometimes you think that the pain only comes from the person receiving the no. But there is pain, especially when it's a family member or someone close to you, for the person saying no. And sometimes what I'm learning through all kinds of different opportunities is that your no, whether it's a no for uh, a family member or a friend or an opportunity or to be long to some, something or even for your kids to go here and go there, um, will open them up to a greater yes. Your no is the is the is the door that they need to open up to a greater yes. And sometimes at the time they don't feel that way. They might feel hurt. They might feel pain because they might get angry. They might refuse to speak to you again. But um but in the end, uh, in the end, uh, your no could open them up to a greater yes. The flip side is, your by you saying yes to a non-God opportunity because you think, oh, this person, it's a great opportunity. It's great. I'll do it. Or this person. It's, it's great. Your yes, the wrong yes could hinder hinder them, and the wrong, and the right no can catapult them. So you, so the church now really needs to listen to the voice of God because not every good thing is a God thing, and the person receiving the no may not understand at the time but in the end you you are opening them up to a greater door you are opening them up to a greater destiny and sometimes people people are in your life for a different for a distinct purpose and and what they're asking you to do goes beyond your pur their purpose in your life. So what if there um what if you have a family member who is starting a business, let's say with cake baking, and you own an advertising firm, and they say, hey, we're family, let's. Could you advertise my cake? Could you help me advertise my cake business? And and the Lord is telling you, absolutely not. I don't want you to do that. 
But you say, Lord, they're family. Of course I'll help them. But he said, I have a greater. Your no will catapult them to a greater yes. Um, and with influence, too, comes a lot of uh, pressure. And the more influence you get is the more self-doubt you have. The more spotlight you get on you is the more um, uh, self-esteem issues you have. And I am a, a fairly confident person most of the time. But even me, like, the worst time for me is when I'm finished with preaching because the the devil often tells me uh, do you think if they knew who you really were uh, they would like you or they would subscribe they wouldn't subscribe you're awful you're not you don't deserve this you're here only because you know and he goes on and on and on with this self-doubt thing and what I've learned to do is I have to put the word of God over how I feel about myself. So it's not so much about self-confidence. It's about God-confidence. Confidence that he knows what he's doing. And he knows why he picked you. And he knows your purpose. The purpose of your life. Um, and your destiny, and you don't, and some, and the more influence you get is the higher expectations you have to, uh, you're expect, you're expected to fulfill, and sometimes those expectations can be crushing. There are business leaders listening to me right now. There are several people listening to me right now, and those expectations are running you ragged. And God is saying right now to, to those people to stop. To stop and really think about what you're taking on, what energy you're putting, on, putting forward, because you're saying yes to all all of these good things and God things. You're helping everybody else. You're doing all this. You're doing your ministry, but then you're sapping your self-energy. And you're wondering, uh, why are you feeling so depleted? You're feeling so depleted because every yes you say, Every yes, everything you say yes to, and that is not a God thing, it saps you. And everything you say yes to, that is a God thing, it strengthens you. And you, you are doing too much. And he just wants you to slow down, to understand that... That the person that you want, want to help you could be hindering. And because another person could come into their life, a person that's ordained to do what they're wanting to do, what they're wanting you to help with, and just take them further than you ever could. So your no, your no could actually be an open door. And the other thing with influence is sometimes with influence it it comes a lot a lot of attention, a lot of un, unwanted and unwanted attention. And the Lord is saying right now to be very discerning. 
be very discerning in business, be very discerning in church leadership, be very discerning, period. Because, because it is, it is not from God that you take on everything. The only thing, things he wants you take, to take on are the things that he's ordained you to do. And this, and the people asking you might be wonderful people. They may be ordained by God to do what they're doing and they just need help. And, and they may be wondering, well, why aren't you, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you helping me with my business? Why aren't you doing this? Uh, because, because you're not or, ordained to do that and you could be hindering that person. And it is so hard. It is so hard not only for the person saying no, but the person, um, not only for the person receiving no, but for the person saying no. Um, and also, with leadership and with demand comes a lot of, uh, you know, with, um, with influence comes a lot of demand. And demand on your time, demand on your energy, demand on you. And the Lord is saying to us leaders today, don't forget to take some time to rest, to rejuvenate. You're not a machine. You are a person. You need to relax. You need to have fun once in a while. You need to rejuvenate. So, so find a place where you can rejuvenate. Find some time where you can relax where nobody's pulling on you, nobody's um, actually um, wanting anything to do, nobody's wanting you to do anything, because with leadership, you often forget that, um, we often forget in society that leaders are human, celebrities are human, we're all human, and we're not superhuman meant to just go miles an hour. If you are going all those, going, 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 doing this and doing that, you're going to burn out. If you are helping this person with their business, this person with their ministry, uh, preaching or whatever, you're, you're preaching over here, doing worship over here, leading your business over here, you're gonna burn out. And the your purpose is too great for you to burn out. And he's saying, you need a place to, to, um, you need to stop and realize that the world will go on if you don't do this thing. That person will find somebody else to do what they need to do. Somebody um, that is ordained to do what what they need to do, and you don't need and you don't need to worry about about it. Cause just like he loves you, just because, just like. Is he's for you? He's for that person as well, and he's got a plan for that person. And sometimes that plan isn't you, and sometimes you could be standing in the way of something great for that person. And um, he's saying, just find time. Uh, not only to do something that you enjoy or whatever, away from what you do, whether it be business or ministry, find a place 
where where you can rest. Find time to rest. Find time to uh, relax and enjoy life. Because if you don't, you're going to burn out. And and there's another thing too. Um, some people do uh, are on the flip side. Some people rest too much and and not work enough. Some people um, and God is saying to those people, get to work. It's not going to just happen. Faith is not passive. It's active. In motion sensors, one of my sermons last week, I I said that God is God is active and when you take a step he opens the door. And um, he's saying to people, you have to get a move on. Faith is not passive, it's active. Uh, people, um, some people say, I have faith, so I'm just going to wait on God. But sometimes God is not wanting you to wait on him. He's wanting, he's wanting you to move, and then he'll move with you. And it'll be a greater, great, uh, it'll be more in his will than you were just sitting around saying, I'm waiting on God. Sometimes waiting is active and not passive, just like faith is active and, uh, active and not passive. But at the same time, uh, you have to really listen to the voice of God and don't expend so much energy working that you can't really think. And um, there is there is a place in God where where He will instruct you what whether it's the time to move or whether it's the time to be still and that's where the voice of god becomes paramount um to your specific situation um it's very difficult preaching in the church because people are are at all different stages. For some people, God is telling them to wait and be still. For some people, God is telling them to work. And the pastor can only bring the word that God is telling them, but it's God is telling him or her. But it's up to the congregation or the people listening. Uh, to discern how the word that is being brought forth applies to their life. Whether they stay, whether they go, whether um, the, Lord, the Lord is uh, saying something. I, whether the Lord is saying something active to them or whether he wants them to wait. And and when you are speaking to the con congregation, you have all kinds of people. So even when you're listening to any sermon, whether it be mine or whether it be a pastor on YouTube or whether it be an in-person church, uh, you need to still uh, be listening to the voice of God because the pastor is, is, the words come from God, but the pastor himself is not the voice of God, if you understand what I mean. Any man or woman that is hearing from God, um, what they're saying 
if they have a discerning spirit and they're called to do what they're doing, uh, comes from God, but they are not God. So you have to discern for yourself, even if you hear a word, what God is speaking to you and how it is a it is to be applied to your life. Um, so that is why I often, before I go into a small group or anything, before I do that, when I hear a word from the pastor in church on Sunday, before I go in the group to, to discuss with them, what God is speaking to me, I have to dis discuss that with God. I have to get what he say, and sometimes uh, he goes beyond what the pastor can go beyond, and sometimes for me, because of our rhythm, he will speak, um, he will speak even very specifically to our situation. And I think coming back to the pressure of leadership, um, I, no, the pressure of influence, I believe that a lot of us are running ourselves ragged and we want to be influential, we want to get our um, website up, we want to do this, we want to do that, and those are all wonderful things, but we don't take the time to understand and really hear from God. Um, really hear what the Lord is speaking to us. He wants to speak to us as a church and as a body. And sometimes in our haste to go, go, go. We're just so, or to get this up, to get this out, to release this album, to do this, we haven't really, we know we have, we have a calling from God, and we heard, we have heard from God, but after that we just run like the wind and just put it out and say, and we like, beg people to buy this, listen to this, or whatever. And God is saying, slow down. I've given you a calling, but I need to teach you. I need to teach you. I need to form you. I need to perfect you. Yes, you have a calling from me. Yes, you have a purpose from me. But... I, along with that purpose, need to perfect what I put in you. And sometimes he will do that with school, with books, with, with people around you. He will put the right people in your life to do that. And he's saying to some people, slow down. Slow down. I know I've given you something to do, but it's not going to happen in a day. He's saying, slow down. I've got you. Be persistent and be, be discerning. Be persistent. I've got you. You do have a purpose to start that business, to start that church or whatever. But I need to perfect you. I need to teach you something. And he's saying, I I will put the right people in your life, but it's important to be teachable. And that's one thing about the pressure of leadership, being teachable. And life will teach you certain things. But it's whether you take those lessons and let them destroy you, let them hurt you, let them uh, dismantle your vision, 
or do you take those lessons and let them for, uh, um, deter you? Uh, remember I said uh, your no could open the door for someone? Uh, some, sometimes when you're receiving a no, you think it's like, oh my gosh, this is just so purple. But sometimes in every no, there is a lesson. So when you receive a no from a situation, whether it be from a friend or whatever, ask God, what is the lesson? What do I need to take from this to make me better at my business or, or ministry or whatever? And he will mold you and he will put the right people in your life. And sometimes he will, he will guide you to certain videos or certain books to help you in your in your endeavor. Sometimes we go, we go out half cocked and say, I'm meant to do this and we don't get training. The Lord is saying right now that it is okay to get training. It is necessary to study and show yourself a proof. If you, if you uh, believe you're ordained by God, if the opportunity is for you and it's ordained by God, you still need the training to hone your to hone your skills. Anointing is a good thing and calling is paramount. But paired with that, you must get training. You must read. You must go to school. You must do watch YouTube videos of professionals that do what you do so you can hone your skill. Uh, you can hone your skill. And training doesn't always mean school. It could mean a YouTube video. It could mean an online course. It could mean a this or a that. Um, training is anything that teaches you. Anything that can hone your skill and make it better than it than it ever been and also mentorship is key and the right mentor is key uh, for um, for um, purpose uh, mentorship is not always necessary but when it is let God lead you to, to the right person and one thing I wanted to say too is when it's when it's really from God, you um, you don't have to worry about uh, plugging and plugging and you you have you can work at something, but you don't have to um, constantly hustle when something is from God and it is. His time for you to rise up and be what he's called you to, to be. He will send the right people. He will cause the right people to see you. You don't have to pin or hustle or step over people to get your business off the ground or whatever. Um, what, you, what, you, what you do is just plant seeds and wait. And sometimes the seeds planted have nothing to do, seemingly have nothing to do with your purpose, but but it's something that God wants. But in the end, it's something that God wants to do in your life and it will lead to an even greater purpose than you ever could imagine. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today and join me tomorrow on Facebook for the story of snakes. God bless. Bye.
just broke that, by the way. I really enjoy um, just being with you guys and teaching for you guys. It's just totally awesome.
thing I love about worship. The Lord is totally going to a different vein. I love when he does this. I love when he just throws a curveball. He just does that in life. Throws a curveball. Now I got it. Now I got it. My 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 drive mode was off. No, my drive mode was on in my and my power mode was off to power my mouse. So when I was done the sermon, it just drove, but didn't it didn't power the mouse. So that's what took me so long to do. But it's so funny about God. He was ministering even in my panic, and He often does that with leaders. You know, we panic too in sermons when things go wrong or when things don't work out perfectly. But I have to, I, um, I have to realize, and every leader has to realize that God has a perfect plan in leadership. And when it comes to influence, um, the pressure of influence, sometimes. We just don't like to show our weaknesses as leaders because it makes us feel weak or we don't like to show when things go wrong or our chair is on the wrong mode or whatever. But the Lord's saying, show those weaknesses as leaders and um, show that everything in life is not perfect. People don't need the dressed up version of you. They need the the real version of you. And so much that it helps people. Now, as leaders, they don't need you to bleed on the pulpit, but they do need you to lead on the pulpit. What I mean by bleed on the pulpit is say every bad thing that's happening to you or or um talk about. Uh, or preach about things that you're working through. Uh, leave the things that you're working through for a select group of people. Not not everybody needs to hear what you're working through unless it has to do uh, with your sermon or whatever. It, if it doesn't and you're just upset and you want to just sound off on the pulpit, um, the pulpit is not a, a place to just sound off and let, let it go or to couch it in scripture. The pulpit is to, to minister to people who are hurting. So if you, if you as a leader need, need to um, unload or you're going through something, find us because we all need that, especially as leaders, especially as the pressure builds. Um, but find a select group of people
able to 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 do that with. You don't have to do it with everybody. But it's in but it's important to find a safe place to um, deal with yourself, especially as notoriety gets higher and higher because the pressure and the expectations like I talked about like I talked about earlier get higher and higher. So it's important to find a place with, or to find people where you can let your hair down, whether it be uh, a professional, like a therapist or a doctor or even a friend. Um, because I know therapy can be expensive. Um, and sometimes you just need a trusted friend to unload on, to say, hey, this is what I'm going through. And it can really just free you. Stop bottling things up, preacher. You're not fooling anyone. You're not fooling God, and you're not fooling the people closest to you, they can see something that's wrong. They just don't say anything because they're afraid you're ex you might explode or act weird or they might be out of place. If you need help in whatever way you need help in, go get it. Because you're worth it. You're worth it. And reach out, don't be afraid to even reach out to a friend or, or a fellow pastor or a fellow leader and say, how do you deal with this? Don't be afraid to get advice because no person is alone in this thing. We're all striving this together and the people have, that have uh, trusted person that that you can go to can be really helpful. Um, bye, I'll see I'll see you tomorrow for the story of snake